to small cap recap. It's a, uh, that dance move is just, I don't, I don't know. You got to be free. You know what I mean? And in this market, I have felt very free because I'm actually not taking too many trades. Uh, I don't know if I've, I may have taken one trade this week. Um, but I'm not saying the market's dead. I'm not saying the market's slow. I'm saying the market's difficult and it's it really just not my preferred stocks that are running. Uh, we'll get into that. I would say that you know, the best stocks of this market lately have appeared to be um, the, the, the sub dollar NASDAQ runners that are just super, super beaten down. The problem is, and I'll show you these charts in just a moment here, but a lot of them, they just gap up into previous or former resistance. They make it tough. There are trades on them. Um, I just think they're a little bit difficult, a little bit, the, the risk reward just isn't there for me. Um, and you know, in the type of stocks that I feel comfortable trading that I trade well, they're just not moving well right now, which is fine. Uh, it's actually, it's giving me a lot of time, like I said, to not trade and to watch. And I picked up on a couple of things that I'm noticing in this market that do excite me. We're going to get into that in a moment here. Um, and just things that I think, you know, basically I don't, again, I don't want to call it a hard or I, I'm going to call it a hard market for me. I don't want to call it a slow market or a dead market. It's not that. Um, but when the market is a little bit more difficult, like it is right now, in my opinion, I kind of want to go through things that I do to kind of navigate through that and to make sure that I'm staying on top of my game, uh, for when the market does heat up. So we're kind of going to analyze a couple of runners here. Uh, look at the spy a bit. Let's just hop right on into the charts. All righty. Almost already. There we go. There we go. All right. So like I said, let's just start off looking at the spy here. Um, we had our 430 test this morning. It failed, and now we're getting this recovery. I'm gonna show you the daily. I actually I think the spy daily chart looks great. Um uh, let's go a little bit wider than a year. Oh my gosh, wait, are we at we are officially at one year highs today? Um, this is officially a one year high. We had a High of 426 that was set. I didn't even realize that back in August of 22. Uh, and we are now breaking over that at our high of 429.62 today. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm assuming we might have broken that a couple days ago. Yeah, but I didn't realize we're at yearly highs. That's great. And I, I really do think uh, we're moving kind of back into a bull market. Whether that means long term, short term, um, I don't I don't quite know yet. But here, let's let's break this down a little bit larger and kind of show you why the spy is going to be a very important uh, decision maker in my opinion as to where the market is going to go from here. So we're getting this breakout, right? Let me take off the highs and lows here. Um, we're getting this breakout and you guys know me. I love my, I love my trend lines um, because it just helps to give me an indication of kind of where everything's at. So we had a really, really key trend break a couple months ago back in February, which is great. And then it just kind of, we had that one more dip or high or low, and we had one more trend set up that was a little bit, in my opinion, more meaningful. This right here, a lot, it's not nearly as steep of a trend. And generally speaking, the steeper the trend gets, that, that trend line, the more likely it is to maybe not get as much continuation, right? That's why one of my favorite patterns, actually, um, when I was kind of first getting started, was like an ascending triangle that just looked basically like this. And here's our breakout area right here. And you know, the, the, le the less steep the, the downward trend line is, generally the better. And this is kind of like a perfect formation for me right here on the SPY. Could it dip? Absolutely. And I hope it does because uh, the SPY and you know, really all the indices are leading indicators. Uh, meaning for those that don't you know, know, the SPY is going to be the first thing to move up or down. Um, large caps will then generally follow. And even if the market starts falling, let's say the market just kind of topples over here, the momentum from this run should still spark a momentum in a couple of large cap uh, sectors. Uh, you know, it, it should spark some momentum in those large caps that do end up getting the momentum moving forward, generally then trickle down into small caps of those industries. I'm, I'm trying to explain it very easily here. Obviously, it's not always that clean. Um, I'm waiting for an actual dip on the spy to kind of see, right? I mean, we've had AI moving really well and AI is at a pretty, pretty critical spot. I'm not going to talk about AI today because I've been very, very bullish on it, still bullish on it, but uh, giving it a little bit of time to consolidate near this $40 level if it can. This is what I'm looking at though, when it comes to the spy uh, in terms of where is this, are we going to potentially get some momentum coming in? Um, and so obviously we have runners this morning. We had mob Q, right? M O B Q. But this, oh, whoops, let's get rid of that. Um, this is kind of what we're seeing though, right? We're seeing these gap ups and then they just kind of fade off and they don't really do much else throughout the rest of the day. 
Saw a very similar uh, story on Hoth here. Let's look at a one minute on Hoth yesterday. Same thing. We had one nice move and then it faded off and did nothing the rest of the day. It's not to say that there aren't opportunities there. There absolutely are. And in fact, I would argue Hoth is setting up great right now for a potential day two. Uh, and I, this, this is why let's get into this kind of section of it here now, because this is where I think that I'm, or this is where I see the market setting up in a really great way, um, for some potential runners. So let's use Hoth as an example here. This is how, things that I do, right? Looking back at the spy first. Now I'm looking into small caps and I want to see what is happening. Is there an indication that we could have a potential short squeeze, right? Coming up soon. And when I look at things like Hoth, when I look at stocks like Hoth, um, we're very mid-range, right? But we have a lot of volume that was traded very randomly. And I say a lot, that's a you know relative term. Um, but the float on Hoth is, one moment, it's three mil, right? And so, yeah, we did have this day and there's going to likely, if it ever got up here to eight or nine, there's going to be a lot of resistance, not a doubt about that. The thing is, it's at three. If it could make it up to that level of resistance, that's another 300%. And so what I'm looking at here is really more resistance, recent resistance you know, by volume. I, looked, I like to look at high volume days and I see we're trading above almost all of these high volume days, right? I mean, let's, let's just, I'm gonna go through and just mark out the levels that I see here and show you. In my opinion, I, I, I think we're very close to a lot of these key, oh, whoops, not quite there right here and here. I mean, these are kind of our levels we're looking at by these days of high volume. And overwhelmingly, we're pretty close to the upper limits of that on days of very high volume. And it's holding there. The, the key is that it's holding. They're not on the daily chart. It's not necessarily that intraday, they're the best stocks that are, are running. Like I said, Hoth had one easy trade on it yesterday. But I like to see multi-day runners. And the longer that these stocks hold up, towards these levels after a gap up, especially considering days, recent days of previous volume. This is where traders are gonna be in from, right? If you get a gap up, and a lot of traders are shorting this, um, because that's kind of been the market, the easiest, some of the easiest trades have just been shorting day one gap ups lately, they, they have. And so when you get people used to that, when people get used to shorting these day one gap ups like that, they keep doing it. And now we're getting things like Hoth where it gapped up a little bit more than expected, most likely, more likely than not. Um, and it, it it's holding up far better than expected, right? If you got short this yesterday, let's just say you got short in the 350s, you're, you're only up you know, 20 to 50 cents a share. You know, that's not great. And that's, yeah, you're up, you're up. But until you're not, and then you decide to add again, decide to add again, that's how these short squeezes start. That's how we get these really just wild runners. And if we can get enough shorts piled into one of these, it can cause that momentum that we're really looking for, right? And yeah, again, resistance at nine, sure, sure. Maybe it holds up there too. Maybe it keeps going. You know, I mean, there's, there's really no way to know for sure. Um, but that resistance is just so far away that there is a lot of room in between for this to run, even if it's 100, 200%, we just haven't been seeing multi-day runners lately. And I look at Hoth, and then I look over at FRZA, which is a runner from a couple days ago, and see a very similar story being told. Uh, let's, here, sure, do that. Cool. All right, once again, a recent high volume day, let's mark out levels. That's an easier one, because there's really only one high volume day. Open, close, and our lower end of that wick. We're holding those levels, right? Like resistance is determined not only by the price something traded at, but by the amount of volume that was traded at that price. So it's really important to be looking for days of high volume or candles of any kind, depending on what chart, like what time frame you're looking at. But it, th that same concept applies. And so right here, when we're looking at this stock that this FRZA that gaps up, uh, you know, a couple months ago and just faded, faded, faded on very little volume, there's not a lot of room for people to get out. Right, I mean, there's there this day. I'm not saying that. Like, I think it traded about 50 million shares, 60 million, call it. I'm not saying that that was one person loading up 60 million shares short, but it does indicate that there could be some potential big players in this with a lot of size. And when you get these fades with really no volume, there's no room to cover. Imagine, just imagine, you have 500,000 shares. Imagine you have a million shares. Right? You need if. if 
you covering 30, 40, 50,000 shares of that is going to move the stock. That's a big move. And so that's more likely than not. When I look at days like this, that just kind of ran out of nowhere, it was likely someone beginning the covering of their short position. Um, whether or not they actually covered all of it, we won't really know there, that's, you know, I, I couldn't tell you that. Uh, and you, you can look at short, uh, short interest and everything, but that's only so accurate. All I know is that based on previous resistance, once again, FRZA is another one that's exciting me here. We're hanging above those levels. And the longer we can hang above here and hang close to the levels of our most recent gap up, the more likely we are, we are for one of these to create a squeeze. And that's what I'm looking at is I want to keep finding charts, not even necessarily to trade the first one, but I'm looking back and seeing, all right, where are these, you know, kind of day one gappers right now in this more difficult market? What are they doing after that gap up? And, you know, if you want to look at something similar, right? Not, not quite the same, but just an understanding, right? When you get a big day of high volume in these fades, this is a shorter time frame. Look at BBAI. Once that squeeze starts, it, I mean, this is a bigger stock. This is an NYSE. This is a, what's the float on this baby? 35 mil. Okay. That's actually low ish float. Um, but not, not crazy low by any means. I mean, it only, you know, a couple, it rotated its float twice here. And we had this monstrous move, a two day move from 350 up to seven, basically a hundred percent move on an NYSE stock with a somewhat higher float. That's what we can get when we get like, once you break those days of resistance, those big days of resistance, things can turn around really, really quick. And obviously BBAI was one of many AI sympathies that ran and it did help that we had a hot industry, a hot sector, which once again, as I mentioned, the spy, once it kind of puts that top in, it gives time for a new sector to either form, show its light, um, whatever that is. So when I'm not trading a lot, that's kind of what I'm thinking about is, all right, what charts are setting up correctly? What are the industries they're in? Another one that I want to actually keep a very close eye on is that of GSIT. Uh, and this one, I think, you know, it's a semiconductor. Uh, I don't know for a fact they actually make semiconductors, but semiconductor related stock which I is another industry that one AI can help, you know, very similar. Look back on the EV days, right? When Tesla starts running, turns from EV companies to battery, to lithium, to things that impact that industry. Semiconductors are very much so in the news right now, stocks like this. And once again, I'm not just saying that like, oh, geez, it, since, you know, semiconductors are hot and in the news that this has to run, but we're looking at this chart. And again, it's holding over very key levels. I do want a bigger dip. But these are the kind of charts that I like to look at. It's a different time frame. It's not nearly as long. There's not as much of a fade, which is actually even a little bit better. I want to find stocks that are holding above very, very key levels of previous recent resistance to see what may potentially run. Um, and that, that's what I am doing right now. And so the ones like Hoth, FRZA, GSIT, all slightly different, of course. But they all do tell a similar picture, in my opinion, of where the market may head to. Uh, and so while I'm not trading a lot right now, I'm absolutely keeping an eye on all of these. And that's, you know, if you're not taking a lot of trades right now, this is a great way to study too, right? Like for me, this is keeping me actively involved. I'm going to move off the charts here for a second because I don't have much else to show. Um, yeah, when you're in these, uh, when you're in a slower market or a, a more difficult market for you, don't be afraid to take a step back and really just try to break down and analyze charts that you're looking at. What is happening? Um, what is not working? What is working? What is working now that may not have worked before? What is continuing to work? Um, that has worked even during other periods of a slow market. That's what I try to do. And that's, you know, ideally I'm, I'm saying all this to you right now. This is almost like more of a webinar for me to just kind of explain the things that I look at, but I hope this can help you if you're not taking a lot of trades or if you're losing a lot of trades right now, because this just isn't your market. Don't feel the need to keep trading and keep pushing. Instead, take a step back and just look at the charts, watch them. You'll be shocked at how much clearer your head gets after a week of not trading and just looking at charts. It really, your head gets cleared a lot easier and you look at things a lot more objectively. At least that's where I'm going through right now. Um, and you know, bust out that journal, write down what you're looking at. R like really get it to stick down, even if it's 30 minutes a day. What did I see on this chart? What do I see on this chart? That's how I'm navigating a difficult market for me. Again, this is a difficult market for me. If it's not for you, I'm like that, that that's fantastic. And I know there are a lot of different traders that trade a different styles. So, um, if this market is working for you, keep crushing it. If it's not take that step back and just look anyways, that's all I've got for today. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have not already, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment down below to see you know, what other kind of stocks like those Hoths, 
FRZAs, GSIT. I do like to read these comments. So leave a comment down below of ones that you think may have potential for a short squeeze as well uh, in the next coming weeks. And make sure you're subscribed. Post notifications are on. I will see you back here next week for Small Cap Recap. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for being a part of the Stocks to Trade family. We just hit 100,000 subscribers, but our goal by the end of this year is to get 150,000 new family members a part of our channel. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and maybe even turn on your post notifications. We cannot do this without your guys' support. So thank you so much. And if you wanna see more of what we're doing, again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment down below. We'll see you in the next video.